Hi, Mike Stish here for Hackaday.com. I got my hands on a sample unit of the new discovery board from ST Electronics. So this is the um, ST32 F0 discovery board. Now we've seen several of these discovery boards um, so far, and they're, they've got the d different designations F2, uh, 3, and 4, and L, and um, they all do a little bit different thing. Um, this one features an ARM Cortex M0 chip, which is right here. And you know, up to this point, I haven't really paid too much attention to these. Uh, I'm mostly uh, um, an AVR person. Uh, but boy, this chip really starts to hit the right price point and push the kind of uh, features that um, I sometimes can't find uh, in, the, in the AVR chips that I like to work with. Um, and, you know, I'll get to that in a little bit. I'd like to just cover kind of what's on this board. First of all, you'll notice that it's got um, a double single row of pins here. And, uh, you know, that breaks out everything that you need. It's got, uh, you know, like 3 volt, 5 volt, ground connections, VBAT. This is going to be the backup for the um, hardware RTC that's in this chip. Uh, and then all of your um, pins for the micro I/O pins for the microcontroller here. Uh, now all the discovery boards have this, but interestingly enough, since they're not um, like a pin compatible pinout, um, you know the this board is going to have uh, outputs in different places than you know one of the other discovery boards that has a different chip on it. What ST has done is they have made the footprint, the, the width of these different, so that if you've made shields or whatever, you're not going to have a problem um, by plugging the wrong board into the wrong shield, which is kind of nice. Um, now what makes this special, it's more than just a breakout board because this part of it right here is a programmer. Um, it's the ST-Link version 2, um, which is a USB programmer. And uh, one of the things that makes uh, me interested in this is there is an open source uh, project out there, which I'll link to in the write-up, um, that lets you use this uh, programmer on a Linux system, which I don't want to use proprietary software if I don't have to. You know, this is a hobby. I'm not um, doing mission-critical development for a large corporation, so I have the... the um, you know, option of saying I only want to develop an open source uh, software, and so that's uh, uh, an thing of interest for me. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of a neat setup, this ST-Link 2 up here. Uh, you'll notice there are two jumpers here, and there is this other header, this uh, six-pin header right here. So this is um, right out of the gate meant for uh, off-board programming. So with these two jumpers installed, you're all set up to program the, the chip down here. But um, if you take these two jumpers off and connect to uh, um, a different chip with a, a cable here, you'll be able to program, and I believe you'll be able to program any of the STM32 uh, microcontrollers because this ST-Link version 2 is not um, you know, just locked into the uh, um, Cortex-M0 chip, so you'd be able to do any of their line, which is kind of nice. Um, some other nice features, you'll see a jumper right here. This is a current um, measuring breakout header. So if you want to see how much current your project is using, you can remove this header and connect your multimeter to either of the pins, and it puts that, um, that ammeter, that uh, current measurement, in line with the feed for the chip. So that's pretty nice. There's also a large area right here for um, other oscillators. So X2 would be um, a crystal oscillator for the system clock of the chip, uh, which isn't needed. It's got an internal oscillator. Uh, but you know, if you're looking for a specific frequency or, or if you're looking for a more accurate frequency, um, you could populate that along with some of these um, resistor capacitor footprints down here. And then there's also an X3, which is, um, I believe it's targeted for the clock crystal, 32.768 kilohertz clock crystal for the RTC hardware that's in this chip. Now going along with these, there are some solder um, bridges here that would need to be um, set up to enable those, but um, you know the fact that it's built in is fine. I don't think um, you need to include that because not everyone is going to be using that sort of thing. And you know, to tell you the truth, I got this on a sample um, 
so it was free to me and I'm, I'm happy with everything that's on it. Um, I have not really established what the actual price of this is. I've seen some other reviews online that say that it's going to be available for $7.99, which is an amazing price point. Um, and I've seen it, I think, from DigiKey in the like $14 or $15 range. So uh, I'm not exactly sure, but either of those prices is, is very reasonable um, just because you do get the USB programmer with it. Uh, you know, and that's a, a pretty cool option. Now, I would like to talk about this chip because, you know, having done most of my development um, with AVR, I'm fine with other 8-bit microcontrollers. You know, I've I've done some work with um, MSP430 chips and, and they're great and porting over is easy and all of that, but I've not had very good luck with um, ARM before. I had a an LPC breakout board. It was a blue board that um, I was trying to use a, a bus pirate to program through the JTAG interface using OpenOCD and I just couldn't really get all the tools to go together and work very reliably. You start to get some problems with linking and, and uh, you know gaps in my knowledge because I don't write my own linker scripts for um, AVR. And <clears throat> so there is a little bit of a hurdle to get into these chips, but it may be worth it um, for you if you start to consider what you get out of this. Now, I checked mauser.com, um, which is where I often order my parts. Uh, I also checked out Octopart, and the prices are kind of all over the map. I found this chip in, in single units for as low as $1.80, um, and at Mauser it's like 377 right now, which is not bad considering you're getting 64 kilobits of flash and 8 kilobits of RAM, which is, 8 kilobits is huge. If you look at um, the equivalent AVR microcontrollers, which are an 8-bit microcontroller, um, you would, for the, for, uh, the same price, you couldn't even get within half that much SRAM. So I, I think that's that's pretty major. The other thing is, I mentioned there's an um, internal RC oscillator, and that is um, an eight megahertz oscillator, which is great. That's what you'd expect from the ARM chips, uh, from the uh, AVR chips as well, like the AT mega line. Um, but what you don't get in that AT mega line is um, the um, phase lock loop. The PLL in here um, has a multiplier of up to six, so you can actually run on the internal oscillator at 48 megahertz, which is fantastic if you're ever dealing with um, color video, that sort of thing. Um, you're going to have, I think it's 11 timers inside of this chip. Uh, it's a 32-bit chip, so um, when you're using the 12-bit um, analog to digital converter, uh, you're, it's a lot easier to kind of work with those numbers or to kind of fake floating point math, you know, if you're going to bit shift in order to keep your resolution until you're done with your, your fake floating point calculations. Um, I think the 32-bit is really nice for that. And uh, I believe this chip also has a, an, a digital, an analog to digital convert, no, a digital to analog. Right, where am I going here? Yes, a digital analog converter, so it'll take a digital value and it'll out, output an analog um, signal on that pin, which is something that I haven't had a need before, but to my knowledge, again, the AT Mega line just doesn't have that. So if I can get this working under Linux and if I can you know, find my way through the tool chain, I think this is going to be um, something that I look to for a lot of my more complex projects in the future. It's still programmed in C, and um, so it's just really getting those tools to work. Uh, along with this in the package, the ST included a um, proto board, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the uh, mail pin headers on um, development boards, and the reason is it's not really going to fit into a single breadboard. I'm going to need like two breadboards. Um, so I may, I'm not exactly sure, I might try and build some kind of uh, adapter board that breaks these out into an S, uh, IDC connector. Um, we'll have to see, but uh, you know, it is nice that you can um, you know, build some of your own test circuits on this little piece of proto board that they uh, included. Um, I'll write up a few other thoughts and link to uh, you know, some pertinent things like how the, I believe uh, Kenneth Finnegan uh, put out a really good video on how uh, phase lock loops work, so you can kind of understand how that clock multiplier works. 
Um, and then there was a really great post on how to program um, these discovery boards under Linux, and that goes to a, a big GitHub project, which is useful. So uh, check out um, hackaday.com um, for those extras. And uh, I'm Mike Stish. Thank you.